what essentially happened is was a serendipity i would say when i went for my interview round at mdi uh, i got to know that okay they've put my default as hr uh, and that was my first preference which i ended up converting so that's how i landed in hr a lot of people feel that uh, you know just to become an hr professional you need to probably study psychology in your uh, graduation you can and it will always be helpful but uh, you could come from any field linkedin is super important because sometimes you know the pace of recruitment is so fast that many times we don't even ask uh, candidates to share their cvs if i like somebody i am actually doing most of my search on linkedin so if you update that well uh, that even works brilliant i am actually going to be implementing a lot of ai uh, within recruitment as well as for the internal talent at our organization just this july which will actually change the way people are going to look at their careers uh, internally as well as people who apply to us externally and it will make sourcing a lot more easier for us as talent acquisition okay awesome I have uh, Nalini Malik uh, with me today, uh, who is uh, going to share, as I mentioned, the secrets of how you get into the world of records. So, Nalini, if I can have you on stage, please. <laughs> Welcome, Nalini. Why don't you tell them what you do at uh, Racket? So, currently at Racket, I'm heading talent acquisition. Okay, I've very recently moved into this role in the last four months. and prior to that i was uh, doing various hr business partnering roles i'm very passionate about business and i have partnered with various parts of the business so i was doing a role where i was uh, supporting all the support functions which at racket we call global functions and prior to that i was working with the sales and e-commerce teams for about 3 and a half years and before uh, joining racket i had started my career as a management trainee with asian paints back in bombay where i was working in employee relations to go further back you were an engineer uh, who decided <laughs> to be an hr which is kind of a choice that a lot of people think that oh why did uh, she do that so do you have an answer to that of course of course and i'm sure there are many like me here uh, who also come from engineering background and realized probably that wasn't it for me so i'll just probably uh, give a little bit of context and background to it uh, i uh, come from a family of engineers my dad his brothers my grandfather everybody was an engineer and i was academically bright so uh, it was like a given right ki engineer to banegi right uh, and that's how i kind of started my journey interesting thing is that when i entered engineering it was the year 2008 i was somebody who was very interested in coding but uh, unfortunately due to the impact of the year 2008 9 uh, it was suggested that it's better to have like a safe career and go into a core branch and i took up electrical engineering which i did not enjoy at all and i think in the last two years of my engineering which uh, i i totally realized that hey this is not for me i think my years in my engineering college also made me feel that i had a certain bit of personality creativity uh, skills that were not getting so much utilized as an engineer which was sometimes you know a more back end job and uh, i felt i could do more i could contribute more in a business setup so that's where the idea came up that you know let me try my hand at uh, doing mba right but uh, let me also tell you that uh, hr was not my first preference i wanted to become a marketer that's how i had started my uh, journey and that's how i had started applying for cat etc all these exams i knew very less about hr because i had very less experience like 6 months in deloitte uh, before i was actually writing my cat exam what essentially happened is was a serendipity i would say now i call it serendipity because i i love this field i realize it gives me a lot of purpose and meaning and uh, i think it was the right choice for me but back then it was actually by accident that i got into hr so uh, i i uh, i had applied to mdi and uh, in in my preference for, uh, you know there's a preference they ask right for which uh, branch you want to kind of take up do you want to do pgpm do you want to do hrm because they have very specialized courses and they, then you have pgim i think i had forgotten to send in that application uh, back to the campus so what essentially happened is that uh, when i went for my interview round at mdi uh, i got to know that okay they've put my default uh, as hr uh, and that was my first preference which i ended up converting 
So that's how I landed in HR. When did you stop questioning whether that's the right field for you? And uh, you know, for the for the managers or the HR uh, enthusiasts of today, what should be the line of uh, learning and studying that they need to do now? I stopped thinking so much about it. I think. Uh, I, I was always somebody who liked to learn a lot from practical experience and that's why I liked MBA as a course very much because it was less theoretical and a lot to do with practical experiences. So the kind of internships, the kind of life projects, case competitions, these are very good opportunities for you to actually learn a lot about the real world business problems that uh, people solve in marketing, finance, in HR, all of these fields. So for me, I think uh, that really stood out. Uh, and my internship was that, you know, that turning point for me uh, because uh, that's when I actually went into an organization and realized, okay, this is the problem I need to solve. Okay, so I, I had interned with GSKCH uh, and that was my first time I actually got exposure to an FMCG setup. Like I had absolutely no idea. I think uh, as an engineer, the, the world is all tech. So you don't really know uh, consumer brands. You don't really understand, okay, what's it like working on the other side in an FMCG company? So uh, the project there, uh, the quality of work I had, I think that really stood out for me. A lot of people feel that, uh, you know, just to become an HR professional, you need to probably study psychology in your uh, graduation. Uh, you can, and it will always be helpful, but uh, you could come from any field because HR is, is a field where you need to have a very multidisciplinary approach, right? You could be in any industry. You could be partnering with any you know, segment of the business. What you need is that basic general management uh, experience uh, that you get in especially the first year of college in, in an MBA because you need to understand business very well right whichever function you may partner with whatever kind of work you do so it honestly doesn't matter whichever field you come from you can always choose to become an hr you are the head of talent acquisition right now at Reckitt for south asia and you must be getting hundreds of applications every week if i'm not wrong what essentially goes wrong in an application and what works in favor of somebody to actually you know uh, cut the clutter and uh, yeah. be there to your notice yeah, I think uh, one thing to understand is that, you know, when you ever write your resumes, is that there are a set of recruiters reading it and imagine the volumes of resumes that you get in a country like India, right? Uh, where there's so much manpower, it's so difficult to break the clutter. So uh, it's very, very important one to be absolutely crisp. So in, in your MBAs, I'm sure uh, you'll have one session with your placement committees who will teach you how to make one page or CVs and try to stick to that for the rest of your life. Like try to have those one pager things because a lot of things you do in your past life, sometimes at different points of time, they become irrelevant. That's very important. And I think there is, uh, there is power in brevity. So keep things as sharp and succinct as possible because it's difficult to articulate, you know, everything that you might have done in your life into two simple sentences. But uh, that's what helps catch attention. Uh, because nobody has the time to sift through so much. And today we have a lot of AI tools also, which is used in the recruitment. Uh, and what they do is they actually pick up a lot of these keywords. And these keywords are more like skills, things which are related to the job designation, right? So that's how a lot of these AI is also trained to kind of pick up. So those skills and the, the way generically they're talk talked about in uh, the industry is something that you should have. And the other tip that I would leave you with is that, guys, LinkedIn is super important. Because sometimes, you know, the pace of recruitment is so fast that many times we don't even ask uh, candidates to share their CVs. If I like somebody, I'm actually doing most of my search on LinkedIn. So if you update that well, uh, that even works brilliant. Narini, Saurav mentioned a very interesting uh, thing which, which stayed with me, which is like, uh, you have to make sure that you're being heard. Uh, as an HR uh, manager or as somebody who looks after talent acquisition, this is also your responsibility uh, within the organization that this happens, that uh, equal opportunity is being given to people, yeah. diversity is in place, and people are getting the opportunity to be heard. Is Reckitt actually this kind of an organization, and what work goes behind making sure that this happens? Sure. Uh, so I think one thing which you guys can actually look us up uh, on the internet is that you know you would find our gender pay gap report uh, we are one of the very few companies who actually discloses this every single year 
and we are reporting this for more than 70% of our global workforce. Why are we doing this? Because we also feel that one, we are very transparent about you know all the things that we do in this space. Uh, we believe in you know uh, in having equal pay for equal work, and uh, a key priority for the company. You would have seen uh, our ex CEO. Uh, Lakshman Narsimhan announced uh, last year that uh, we are actually looking at making Reckitt uh, gender balanced by 2030 across all management levels. Now I'm sure you understand the recruitment uh, challenge that that poses to uh, all of us and what is it that we are going to do in the next seven years to make this happen, right? So. And, and it's not something that you, you know, like he mentioned, that you do only from a recruitment perspective if you don't have the right culture within the organization. Uh, so that, you know, people feel uh, heard, they feel that, you know, they have an equal space within the organization. People come with very different backgrounds and they might have different needs, right? So equity is also something that's very important uh, to create that right uh, inclusive culture. This has actually shifted us as a company to focus a lot on uh, creating the right kind of policies. Um, uh, also, uh, you know, we have this uh, concept of an ERG, which is like employee resource groups. So we have employee resource groups for women, for disabled uh, employees. We have it for uh, LGBTQ plus employees. So we have all these forums so that, you know, we're actually hearing from our people that, you know, what is it that they want within the organization? And then we look at co-creating these uh, you know things that they would need so that they can be successful within the organization Nalini I promise to them that I'll ask you something and uh, yeah. then we'll open it up to them asking yeah, yeah, you questions sure. is how do I impress Nalini if I have <laughs> to get into Reckitt okay. and I'm re trying really hard in my B school to do that I think uh, it's very important to be authentic I think what happens is that uh, B school makes you feel like you're a part of a rat race okay and uh, you know you'll realize that once you join in June, July, whenever you guys have your joining, in three months you will be hit with your summer internship process. Suddenly you'll realize all those friends that you were working with, they were, you're all competing against each other and it'll feel like, okay, you need to do something earth shattering to stand out. I would just say that be yourself, okay? Uh, be authentic, be truthful, you don't have to, it's, I mean, many times uh, the answers that I get to questions like, you know, why HR are so gassy and so sad, because I know that, you know, that's not what people actually thought through. A lot of them have had stories like me where, you know, maybe it was, it just happened and uh, maybe that was the best option that they got. Uh, out of all the options that uh, they probably applied to when they were applying for MBA. So just be authentic in your story. The other thing is that if I look at people who would fit in from a record perspective, uh, I, I would look at people who are self-starters because uh, we're not the kind of company who believes in spoon feeding people. We believe you're adults, you're smart people, you're coming from great B schools and you're here to make a difference. So we want to see that drive, we want to see that uh, you know you guys are self-starters, you're going to take that initiative and go out and do things. And uh, I think the third thing for me would be learning agility. So that's a key skill that you learn in B school also. And that's what you need to take away, the ability to figure things out, right? You won't know everything. But you have people around you, you have the internet, you have the ecosystem to figure things out. And that's what you need to learn. You need to be uh, very agile in your learning so that you, know, you f figure out how to solve problems that get thrown at you on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's something that you know, I would really be looking at. Superb. Thank you very much, Nalini, for sharing this uh, with us. I hope that it was helpful uh, for them to understand how to impress you. Uh, you can ask further questions to Nalini as well. Uh, before we start taking questions, I would like to call upon stage Apurva as well. Apurva is uh, somebody who has recently joined this organization and she's in her MT program. She can share a bit about her experience as well and you can ask her uh, these questions as well. Apurva, can you please join me on stage, please? Uh, I saw one hand. Um, yeah, I'll start with that gentleman. As you have seen recently that GPT is coming and AI is uh, booming. So as a HR, I mean, we have seen that uh, so many people will be losing the jobs and all. So how do you see and your organization see as, uh, you know, uh, taking a AI as a strength and applying to HR in the organization structure and take the output from that? There are going to be many more technologies that come up and, you know, to answer your question, uh, I'm actually going to be implementing a lot of AI uh, 
uh, within recruitment as well as for the internal talent at our organization just this July, which will actually change the way people are going to look at their careers uh, internally as well as people who apply to us externally and it will make sourcing a lot more easier for us as talent acquisition. I've done a course in brand management and it said that marketing today is no more just about co-marketing where teams sit and strategize, but it's also about association with HR where companies work in their internal brand management and change organizational behavior so as to put a positive impact of the company. So can you give me any instance at Reckit to understand it more practically that how HR works closely with marketing so as to move the brand behavior and um, in that sense. Okay, so what do you think I'm doing right now? Yes, you are essentially. So this is this is called employer branding, right? I'm mm. trying to reach all of you before you get into your campuses, so that you know you know Reckit, you know about us, and you know what kind of work we do. Because a lot of times we are known for the great brands that we are, but we may not be known so much uh, sometimes for. Uh, you know, the employer brand that we are, right? When you go into campus, you'll realize it. You'll see a lot of your seniors, etc., talking about it, people going for internships, coming back and sharing their experiences. So right now, as people who are probably working somewhere or as fresh graduates, you may not have heard so much. You would just know us as, okay, uh, we're the company that makes Dettol, we're the company that makes Harpic. So this is an example, and you will see that, you know, once you're on campus, we'll be coming a lot more frequently you'll be ha having a lot of touch points with us. So that's where we partner very closely with our marketing organization. So uh, there's Saurabh and we have Dylan who heads up health marketing for us. Their teams work very closely with us in going to all these campuses because we run case study competitions, we run um, uh, the campus recruitment process. A Lot of touch points that we have with all of you once you go back to campus as well. Before I let you guys go, uh, one small question to Apurva. Apurva, why don't you share your MT uh, journey or experience that you have had with uh, Reckitt uh, so that they also get to know what exactly is in store for them you know, when they become part of this organization. Sure. So I'm, I am from XLRI and I, I got selected for the summer, summer internship at Reckitt. And it was all by chance. I was all over the place when I came into uh, MBA and thought, where do I want to go? And Reckitt uh, did happen by accident. At a, any company, when you go into the internship, you're all pumped up. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to make all the changes in the world, in the company that, that I can do in those two months. But trust me, they go, they go by like this. First, setting expectations. <coughs> with the manager, with the guide. It's very important. If you don't do that, they'll think of something else that you're going to do. But you don't, you are not aligned with them. So I think that is throughout in internship very important for you. And uh, the next thing I think is asking for help. So you ask for help from your professors, your friends, your colleagues, your fellow interns, everyone. And guys, please learn your excellent PPT skills. They are, they are your friends. They are going to be there for you when anyone else is not there for you. When I you know, got into the internship and there I converted the PPO, I really liked working for Reckitt for one reason, is that here the autonomy of work is very nice. So I've heard stories where the managers on your head asking for you to do this work, do this change. But here, you are given an autonomy of work. And even if you have an idea that you know can help the company, they are going to go ahead and let you implement that. As Nalini mentioned, it's a great, great place for women to work with because uh, having come from previ previous experience also, I feel that I was not biased against in any manner being a, being a girl. So I think that is also very important for the women out there. Lovely, thank you very much. Oh, Apurva, thank you very much, Nalini, for sharing your journey. I hope that it was helpful for you guys also, the kind of journeys that you have experienced, the kind of people that you have met today, and the things that you have seen, and the goodies that you guys have won. Once again, guys, give them a big round of applause, please. <laughs>